and welcome back. Here we are in part two. Now, if you're following for part one, I don't really need this. I'm not saving it. We were just playing around. I'm going to close it. Don't save. Automatically bring up a new sketch. Now, now we're going to have some fun. We're going to learn all the same sketching stuff that we just did. And we're going to insert an image, though. What we're going to do is we're going to take this image and we're going to import it. Now, if you want to do the same exact image that I'm doing, it'll be a uh, link to the image will be down below. Feel free to download that. Save it to your computer, anything you want. But we're going to make sure we insert the canvas first. So we're going to come up here, go to canvas, click insert, find it on your computer. We're using the white ranger icon because I'm doing the white ranger coin. If you have a different coin, no big deal. And again, you can put this on any plane you want, but we're just going to stick straight to the top. Hit OK. This little corner, you can basically size it up, big or small. It doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to calibrate it, but big or small. And I like to make the canvas 50% opacity. So that way I can kind of see what I'm drawing on top of it. Some people like less, some people like more. I use 50, it goes that way. We'll click OK. Now, some of the stuff that people want to do beforehand is know your measurement sizes. So for this coin, I want it to be 50 millimeters wide. And it's just the number I want, size I want. So we're going to go with that. We're going to come over to Canvas. We're going to right click and we're going to calibrate. And what this is going to do is get our canvas size the exact size that we want. So I'm going to go left side, right side, a straight line as humanly possible, and calibrate to 50. And what that did is from the two points I clicked, made that 50 millimeters. So we now have that right size that we want. I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down, no big deal. And we're going to create a sketch like we did in part one. Click Create Sketch. I want this plane because that's where it's on. If you guys did rotate around it, you'll see that obviously it's only on the one plane. And we're going to start a sketch. So, how would we do this? How are we looking at it? Lots of circles, some lines, potential splines or fillets. Splines there probably. And then probably some trimming. And then a mirror because if you can't, if you can't tell, this thing is directly down the middle. And a mirror across. So we're just going to start right now, right in the middle. We're just going to split this thing right down the tube. It doesn't really matter if you go up and down, as long as you have a line, that's your mirror line. That's what we're going with. It's going to go to the middle. Now, I want the outer edges. So we're going to do circles. So circle one. Now, a lot of people might just eyeball this. I want it 50, right? That's what we said 50 millimeters. So you can click this. And you can see that it's going to be 51.92. I don't want that. I'm going to type it in. Make it 50. Now we have circles within circles. And then we're going to trim everything else out. So I'm going to hit that O button for the offset. Click the circle that I want to offset. And bring this in. Now I prefer whole numbers. Or at least quarter numbers. So what I'm going to do is find out right about where I want it. Looks like minus 2.59. So I'm going to make that minus 2.5. And hit enter. Now I need another circle because it's offset there again. So I'm going to hit offset, hit the main circle. Now something you should know is you can't offset an offset. So you're going to have to keep using the same circle unless you build another one. So make sure you go back to the same one, but you can always offset that one. We're going to suck this back in again. See where the curve of the line goes. Looks like about 375. So I'm going to go minus 3.75. All right. And then it looks like we have one more tiny one because that looks like the same curve it might not be but i'm going to offset one more time i'll shrink it in and see if that arc matches which i wouldn't say it does perfectly but for this tutorial we're just going to go that way i could spline that out but i'm not going to i'm going to go about minus which can be minus five Said it's not perfect. I should probably spline that, but we're going to do that with the other arc. And we're going to call it good just so it's a little bit smoother. And you'll see why later. All right. So now we need to get some straight lines in here. So I'm going to take these straight lines. I'm going to hit the L button for line. I'm just going to start down here. We're going to, one of the cool things about this is it'll constrain to your dotted line. So if I grab here and I drag down, you'll be able to get pretty much in the middle. I'm going to click there. Oops. 
try that again. I'm gonna hit line. I'm gonna suck in. See how it has that dotted line? I'm gonna go straight down to where I think that would be. And we're only gonna do this on half. Remember, we're gonna have a mirror line in this half. So we're just gonna focus on this half. So and what I'm using for zoom in and zoom out is my mouse scroll rule, scroll wheel. I'm gonna go from there. So let's just start making our lines. You can go up and beyond the, you can go up and beyond this if you want to and trim it out. I'm just gonna constrain it down the line because I can cut it out later. Good there. Roughly here. Now, when you're zoomed in, a lot of people will try to get this so specific. But if you're zoomed in like this, you are looking at pixels at this point. And nobody else can see those pixels. So there's no point in being perfect because it's your drawing and everything's going to be unique anyways. But the perfection line is it's irrelevant at that point from that distance. It's so like right here, I'm going to use a fillet here and not a spline. So I'm going to zoom in and just roughly get to where I think this lip would be and then follow it up. And then I'm going to go, oops, which is fine. See, I missed that. It's not quite where I want to, but we're going to fix that later. We're going to go back down to this point. Go around. And we're just going to make this quick. Same thing with here. I know the line's going to come right about in here. Go up. Chase this down all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to hit that little check mark. So it's going to stop that line. And I basically have two more lines that I need to do before I start adjusting stuff. So I need this line. Hit OK. So I don't need to do any more lines. Now what I'm going to do is these are parallel to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this line. Again, try to make it to about where you think it'd be. And that way you know this line is directly parallel with that. Now actually, what I'm going to do is delete those two because I didn't like the way that first line was. So I'm going to redo the line. Roughly there. There. We're going to hit OK. We're going to offset. And again, I'm more particular. I like the, say, like 1.25. But we know these are parallel. So perfect. And lastly, but not least, we're going to need to make these curves, which we're going to use our splines. So we're going to come up here, click the spline tool. I'm going to think it looks about right here. And here, basically, every time you click, it's going to help arc where you want it to go. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we can adjust it. And we're going to do some adjusting so I can show you that. But the shorter you go, the more curves you can have. So I kind of go in between. And once you once you use a lot of splines, you get really used to this. And it's just kind of an in-between of when to super hard do it or not. But we're going to go roughly about there. All right. And then if I don't think that is good, see how it kind of looks like it bows a little bit there. I'm going to go back to Select Tool. I'm just going to move this out just a little bit. Okay. And then this one has a much sharper edge. Oops, put that here, that didn't look good either. So we're gonna go back to the spline tool. Start at our bottom line. Zoom a little bit. And we're just gonna kinda trace it on down. Now, one of the things that I would recommend with splines is make sure that you're kinda on the inside of your shape on and not the outside. It seems minuscule because you're gonna you can adjust later but inside of the image just tends to make it closer to what the curve should be but we're gonna go from there and again i'm gonna come back in here hit select i can adjust these out a little bit it's a little rough in there but again when we're zooming in like this there's you're saying a little rough because we are zoomed in All right, so there we go. If I turn off the canvas, which I should mention too, you can always turn off and on, is looks like we pretty much got our basic shape. Basically what we need to see around and golden from there. 
Now, the question is going to be, is when we start trimming stuff out. So, let's trim that out. Now we're going to hit our T button, like these extra lines. Don't need that. I want this complete object to be around here, so I need all that to be in here. I need this to be trimmed out, because I want this to be one piece. Trim most of this second circle out. It was built for one purpose only, and that was for the constraints down here. I'm gonna trim that out. It's good there. I'm gonna trim you out. I'm gonna hit select. Let's see what we got. So, if everything has worked right, right now you're gonna see all these should be selected because everything but this hole, which is fine. Same thing here. You can see all that's highlighted because there's a hole there. And then you should be able to see this all is one piece. Now, still need to fill it these though, right? Because these have a little bit of curves. So we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna hit the fill it button right here. We're gonna select these two. And we're gonna move it on down. And again, we're just eyeballing this. I mean, this looks pretty good. Pretty zoomed in. Got that curve. And that was just two straight lines. Boom, now it's curved. I'm gonna hit enter. And we're gonna do the same thing up here. This one has a little bit, actually, hold on, hold on. Hit escape, select. I wanna see this dragged over a little bit more. Remember we said we thought we might have messed up these lines, just a skosh. So there we go, I like that better. So now we're gonna hit that fill one more time. Select two buttons, or two lines, fill it a little bit, hit enter. Perfect. All right, now we need all these that we just drew to mirror over. So what I'm gonna do now actually, cause I don't need this constraint anymore, I'm gonna delete that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mirror across this plane. So I'm gonna go back to the mirror function. I always like to select my line first, cause when you select your line first, every time you select a new line, you'll see where it goes on the other side. So I'm gonna select, select, select. We're gonna turn the canvas off while I'm doing this so you can see. See how it's building the lines in as I select them. Make sure you're selecting your curves. And voila. See how that magic did everything in there? Hit OK. I'm going to trim out this middle line because I don't need it anymore. Basically, all that did was all the mirror objects were in there. So that's our shape. That's exactly what we wanted. That's the coin from the canvas to there. Now that we have the shape done, actually, I forgot one thing. So most coins have a little outer edge to it. Can't really see it on this one, but like, think like if you look, grab a quarter, the outside edges of that. We're going to make sure that we have those little dimples out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I tried this before and I think I want to use an arc instead, but I might use a circle. Um, I'm going to go circle, make it a little flat because I just want a little bit of a dimple. Let's go five. I'm going to trim this out. And then this is the other feature I forgot to mention in the first one, but we're still going to use it today. So this, I don't want to do that 100 times around, you know, the 360. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create circular pattern. I'm going to select what I want. I'm going to select the center point. This is a very circular object, so I know where the center point is because I did it based in the middle. So my center point is right there. Now, this thing's going to do full 360. I can do 45, 45 degrees. I can do however many ways I want to. There's, there's a thousand different ways I can do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to, I don't know, let's go 55. That might be too much. And what I'm doing right now is I'm adding as many of these circles as I want around the full 360. So that didn't work. I'm trying to get it as close as possible for it to be bumpy. I think 35 looks pretty good. So the cool thing about this feature is when you're circular padding, if I went to an angle, so that's 180. If I want to go, I can change that to any angle. I can go 45 degrees, anything really. But I'm gonna keep it for simple purposes this way. 
a little bit of overlap. And if I wanted to remove any of these, I could select that checkbox. It actually removes them. But we want it full, so I'm going to hit OK. And that circular pattern now has the outside of the circle, outside of the, the cone. And there's going to be one last thing, and I'm just going to make one more circle or one more little bump here because I know I did this before, and I need it to be. Um, I'll show you why I'm making this last circle. So you can do it now. You can do it later. I'll make one last circle. Hit OK, and boom, we're done. So we wrap this up. We're gonna go to part three. So go ahead, go ahead, get up here and hit save. I'm gonna title it White Ranger Coin. You can go whatever project location you want. Go add in project, gonna hit save. Boom, we have our sketch. So let's get over to part three, and we'll turn this into a 3D object.